All right, so we have a moment for surprise. When we came up with this award, uh, when Knight came up with this award, the idea was that we were going to find an innovator who inspires us to innovate more and to learn from, and we did that, Knight did that extremely well in Fighting Sue. But the idea was also to give forward. And so we gave Sue, not only did she have to come here to accept her award in cold, miserable weather she's complained about, <laughs> not only did she have to give us an inspiring talk, and we thank you for that, uh, and, and put up with our questions, but finally she had to do her homework and come up with a new enterprise that will be the recipient uh, itself of a $25,000 Knight Innovation Grant. So I now turn to Sue. She did a lot of homework. She talked to a lot of people, a lot of reporting to give the award for this little surprise of the extra second Knight Innovation Award. It's true, it's true. So I did, I did a ton of work because I am Canadian and I'm very diligent and I'm very <laughs> conscious. And I, I really did. So I did some crowdsourcing. I did some talking on Twitter and Facebook and stuff. And then um, I had some phone calls with people and I did a spreadsheet and I made up. There were no criteria. <laughs> I thought, you know, Knight is very clever to like outsource this whole piece. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and, so, and so I made up criteria because there were none and I cross-referenced things and I brainstormed and did a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and then in the end, and I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to do here. Am I supposed to say the name sure. and then it will be an exciting sure. reveal? Sure. Okay, <laughs> so I will just say the name. <laughs> so um, after much, much investigation and discussion and consultation with many, many, many people and for many, many, many good reasons, which I will not enumerate all of, um, but I'm giving the award to muckrock, not .org, .com, right? Mm. Muckrock.com, which is a really great thing that does stuff with FOIA, I can never say that with a straight face. Freedom of Information Act requests, it processes them for people who want them to be carried forward and then it reports on the outcomes of them and they're doing a lot of very good stuff right now on drones. So I got the notice about this Thursday night. I thought it was a prank. Um, it was, I had just finished uh, our budgeting for the next year. Um, and I was really excited because we could hire one more half-time person. And now I have to redo all my budgeting, which is a very good problem to have. Uh, I, do, I should have a disclaimer. I know this is for, for rewarding innovative news um, and sort of charting the future of, of news. Um, but uh, I'm not a journalist, uh, as determined by the NSA, Homeland Security, and the state of Virginia has determined that Muckrock is, is not a journalism organization, despite the fact that we publish news daily, despite the fact that I work at the Boston Globe. My editor was a little disappointed to hear that. My mom was a little relieved. Um, <laughs> um, but a few years ago, I, I was talking with my co-founder, and we came up with a fairly radical idea of what would happen if you made the public records process public. Um, in terms of it, who's filed a public records request before. It's a very lonely process. It's one-on-one. <laughs> -on -one. You're going up against an agency that has probably more lawyers than you, definitely a lot more time than you, and you're just going back and forth like with this, this male-bound version of ping pong. Um, and my first public records request had all failed. I, I was in upstate New York filing records request, FOIL uh, here. Um, and the police department just said, we're not going to give that to you. And they didn't even justify that. And so I said, well, I can't afford a lawyer, so I guess that's the end of the road. Um, so we looked at what the journalism was that was important to us and how much it is based on records um, from the government, from other sources. And uh, we said, look, if we just sort of take this process and make it public from the beginning, somebody files a request and it creates a new page on our website and anybody, a lot of people say, hey, I just filed this request, tweet out a link to it. And then as soon as that request is updated, it's updated on the website. And so when an agency like that upstate police department doesn't respond for two years, that is recorded and everybody can see that. And um, so I was like, you know, this, there could be something here. Well, you know, at the time uh, there was this great new site called Patch that was sort of scaling journalism out um, and doing a lot of hyper-local journalism. Um, I was like, you know, they'd be a perfect customer. We can sell to newsrooms and build a business on this. Uh, so I asked my 50 closest friends if they thought this was a good idea, a mix of lawyers and journalists. They said it's a terrible idea. Nobody will ever pay for it. Um, and it won't work. And so uh, because I was either that or get really good at Guitar Hero, um, I went ahead and built the site anyways. And, uh, you know, a few years later, 8,000 requests filed, 180,000 pages published. 
um, a few jail threats, weekly death threats. Um, we're now sort of self-sustaining. Um, we charge our users uh, to file requests. We wanted to build a news site that wasn't based on paywalls, wasn't based on advertising, because uh, as somebody in the industry, I do worry about those corrupt enforces. And so we charge people not to view anything, not to see anything, uh, not to read the information that their government is making, but to participate. Um, and for very few of the things you can participate, you can follow requests free, you can ask questions for free, get advice for free, um, and we only charge people at the very end. And uh, it's been an amazing experience. Um, so a little bit about the mechanics of the site. You just sign up, uh, put in your credit card information, and we guide you through the entire request process. Um, seven other groups have sort of said that they're going to do something similar. People are like, we can clone what you're doing. It's not that complex. Uh, so far, none have launched. Um, we're waiting for a little more competition here. Um, but uh, it's been effective. Um, our users, we have a group of users who started filing requests with the NSA a few months ago. And they were surprised when they actually got some documents back on a French security firm called Vupin. Um, and so now they've started crowdsourcing a major project where they're going after hundreds of contracts with the NSA and looking into who are our foreign suppliers of surveillance equipment. Uh, that's something I never would have thought to think of. Um, and talking a little bit earlier about sort of putting other people in control and sort of what happens when you give up control. Um, our user base, we planned on, like I said, Patch. Patch, as it turns out, was not a great customer. Uh, we had a lot of negotiations with them and uh, never went anywhere. Um, but we have Tea Party activists. We have marijuana activists. We have uh, parents who just want to know what their school funds are being spent on. We have users who file for their own files. Um, we have sort of ordinary people. We have researchers. We have independent journalists who find they can't be taken seriously when they're asking uh, tough questions and reporting on important stories. Um, and we have whistleblowers. You can sign up for our site anonymously and put in a pseudonym. So we've had a couple cases where city employees say, hey, they're screwing around with the expense account, but I don't want to lose my job. And so they, they see the documents, and this is a way to safely leak them for that. Um, and it's been an amazing experience. Uh, we recently worked on another local surveillance project. Uh, is anybody familiar with automated license plate recognition? So uh, police departments get all these really fun toys from Homeland Security. Um, and so our users started filing requests for it. And uh, we filed a request for how Boston was using uh, license plate readers. They were scanning all this information in. Um, we filed a request for it, and it turns out they were recording this data for four times as long as they said they would and not properly protecting it. So because of just before we could even write a story about it, just the request canceled the program. So, um, you know, people, people come up and tell me and say FOIA is useless, um, public records can't work, and, and we can't find reporting on the stories we're doing. The amazing thing, the surprising thing to me has been our amazing user base and sort of them making that happen, uh, you know, and, and the surprising directions they've taken the site that I never could have imagined. Um, so anyways, I've spoken way too long, but I can't thank you enough. This is amazing and a huge honor, and we're excited to see what we can do with it. Congratulations, Sue Gardner and Michael Morrissey. Thank you all for coming, and please enjoy the fellowship. Thanks. Thank you very much.